giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rechakwadash, the honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the Akim out there doing the work of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, in truth, faith, and in sincerity. This is Matthew chapter 24, verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. Okay, that great tribulation is the time that we are currently heading into. Okay, Lord was not talking about a time past or some event that already has taken place. He was prophesying about the very times that we are living in right now. Okay. Matthew 24 and 21. But then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. Okay? Because we are in the, uh, the crescendo, if you will, of, of all of this madness. All right? The culmination of all of this madness is coming to a head. And as you all know, that grand finale is the the uh, the apex, if you will, of the movie. And this is what we're coming to. We're coming to that grand finale of heathen rulership. All right, before the heavenly Father ushers in the rule, rule of righteousness under His only begotten Son, whose name is Yahweh. All right. Now, Yahweh Shah means he's salvation. Okay? The Heavenly Father, his name is Yahweh. And Yahweh means he to be, which translates to he is. All right? And, and uh, right. The, these days of great tribulation are right ahead of us. And really right now, at any moment, it, Everything could break wide open, okay? We're in serious and somber times. The United States Federal Reserve note, the U.S. dollar, is quickly losing if it hasn't altogether already lost its world reserve currency status or their world reserve status. And so that spells economic woes for America. Because here we are, all right, no manufacturing, we're not exporting anything, just a country of consumers, okay? Everybody is in that, you know, uh, chasing the bag spirit, trying to get money. For what? I don't know. The money is worthless. Y'all not, there's some people out there that's in the know, they're getting gold and silver, but even that, the scripture tells you that Y'all going to be casting your silver and your gold, or at least your gold, in the streets. Okay? Uh, let's see if I can find it. Okay, so turns out I was just right around the corner from the verse and we're here. Well, not really. That's the precept that I got. But uh, yeah, I got a precept in uh, Ezekiel chapter four. We're going to go into it in just a minute. But I'm here at Ezekiel chapter seven, verse 19. It says, they shall cast their silver in the streets and their gold shall be removed. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's this whole um, digital system that they're putting in place is going to outlaw here in America constitutional money, but other parts of the world, you know, uh, gold and silver will not be in use. All right, the elites hate. 
for the common folk to have silver and gold because they understand silver and gold is is how you get sovereignty. That's you get silver and gold, you have power. All right, you had the power to hire people, put people to work, you know, uh, make things happen. When you got silver and gold. What they want to set up is this digital system so that if you're not in line with the narrative that they've provided or that they got going on and you um, bucking up, you, you, you causing waves, you're not towing the line, so to speak, they can just turn your money off. See, you can't do that when you got sovereign money which is silver and gold, cattle, land, you know, livestock, things of that nature. So, they're getting ready to put everything on lockdown to where they have complete control of not only uh, what you spend or how much you spend, but what you spend or, or put it this way, what you buy. Okay? So if they don't like a purchase that you're about to make, well, your your chip won't work. Because we're going to a, a microchip system. Not in the card. It won't be the chip won't be in the card anymore. Or on your phone, it'll be actually in you. Now this is what Revelation the thirteenth chapter speaks about. All right, Revelation 13, and when you start about verse 16 to the end of the chapter, it speaks about a mark of the beast. Well, that mark of the beast is none other than a microchip, okay, that that they will be implanting in everyone soon. We're in the, we're in the beginning stages of them setting that system up, okay? Now, back here in Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 19, it says... They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right. So that day of wrath is what I'm speaking about. Now, please make no mistakes about it. There is an all-out offensive being waged right now against American citizens, and more so against the truth of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and those who bear that truth, the Hebrew Israelites. They're coming at us with all guns blazing. All right. And I've mentioned the economy, but they also, you know, they got the gender wars going, so they they weaponized our women against us. And that's been since the since feminism, but They've really been ramping it up and poking at that 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 sore, all right, picking at that scab with these uh, social media wars, these social media gender wars, all right, and and it's, it's mainly the Israelites, which you will see some Edomites here and there, but the Edomites going at each other's throat. The men at the women, the women at the men, you know, and and us here at Great Millstone, we just remain neutral and, and peep game on that. We know the time, with you know what what it is with these women. They ain't work for shit. And if the heavenly Father set it up, well, we can uh, do our due diligence. We'll do that due diligence, and we'll keep it moving. Okay, or do benevolence. All right, the heavenly Father have you know have some mercy and give you a chance to get your get your do benevolence in. We get it in and we keep it stepping. You know, and that's just the times that we're in. Now it ain't, of course, that ain't you know the ideal situation. But we're at a time of war. And, and really, it's time to get out of that mindset and that spirit of wanting to get some pussy. 
you know. Because this ain't the time to be worrying about getting some pussy. And I, I say it like that because, you know, as men, I'm speaking to men, dealing with this as adult things, adult, adult situations. We're at war. This is war. And, and the less distractions that you have, well, the more successful you can be carrying out, you know, our objectives, which is to preach this gospel. And to see the salvation of our Lord, Yahweh Shaham Masiyah. You know, so uh, let me go back through this. Talked about the economy, the situation, you know, with the uh, amongst our nation, with men and women can't get along because of they've drunken of the wine, of the wrath of this whore, Babylon's, uh, well, of her cup, they drunk the wine and the wrath of her fornication. That's it. All right. So, yeah, most of all, two-thirds of the people here in America, of the Israelites, two-thirds, have drunken and are completely inebriated, all right, from the wine of the wrath of the fornication of America, this whore, Babylon. So they, they, they are problems. They are problems to what we, what we are trying to accomplish. They don't fit into this, all right? And when the time comes, the Lord going to deal with two-thirds of our people. But as the scripture says back in Ezekiel 7 and 19, they shall cast their silver in the streets and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, all right, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. That's what everybody's looking for. I don't know why you're thinking you're going to cash in that 401k and live happily ever after. Who, has you, who have you seen that has done that? Maybe uh, one or two people. And don't get me wrong, you got people that retire, and they can get, you know, some people made good on their pensions and 401ks, but do they live happily ever after? And and majority of the time, it's not. There's always an exception to the rule, but majority of the times, they, they got all kind of ailments taking all types of medication, you know, they, they just, you know, really just, just getting by. Because we eat garbage. We really don't have healthy lifestyles as a people. You know, as opposed to Esau, he'll go rock climbing, uh, mountain biking, hiking, they'll hike. And they just get up and jog. Shit, if nothing else, they'll jog. They don't care where they at, in the city, out in the woods, in the country. They'll try to stay active. But us, we eat this garbage, all this fried shit. God damn it. You son of a... We eat all this fried foods, you know, garbage. Macaroni and cheese, you know, lots of pasta, heavy uh, carbs, and, and meats that ain't prepared right, okay? Nothing wrong with meat, but as you about to see, the meat is all tainted. Everything is tainted. But we eat bad, then we sit down, we watch sports or your favorite show, and then that's it till you fall asleep. You get up and go to work. So, shit, after 40 years of that, 30, let's say 20, 20 years of that, 
You retire 25 years. You 60, 65. After all that, you broken down. You have to go get your insulin. You got to, you know, maybe you have to go to dialysis. All, all these things, man. That's not how you're supposed to retire. Okay? But anyway, it's, it's, it's several issues that we'll be able or uh, will be confronting us as a people, the Hebrew Israelites. I don't care who you think you are. Okay? You're not going to get around. This is why Romans 3 and 3 said, well, for what if some do not believe? All right? So shall your unbelief make the faith? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring that up. Faith of the Most High would not would, without effect. So this is Romans chapter 3, verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Yeah, what if you don't believe you're a Hebrew Israelite? So that means because the new age say, if you just if you just think on it hard enough, you can make it manifest. So here it is, you've been 20 years thinking you are more. Is that's that's just gonna make you a more? Because all people bugged out out there on all types of shit, you know, wanting to be gods and trying to make themselves God, but denying the actual God that who God power comes from. And there's a scripture in, in, in the Bible that speaks to that, you know. But anyway, Romans 3 and 3 says, for what if some did not believe? So you don't believe you're a Hebrew Israelite. So shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect. Right, so you don't believe I'm a Hebrew Israelite. So, yeah, that's going to, is that going to make my faith null and void? Or the faith of anyone else who truly believes? Is that going to, uh, is it counsel our faith? Or again, make it null and void? The scripture says, verse 4, God forbid, yea, let the most high be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged, okay? And that's the thing. When it's all said and done, because going back to, which I didn't bring it out, but when you, when you read Isaiah 8 and 20, it says, to the law and to the testimony that if they speak not according to this word, then there is no light in them. Okay? So, this is why it says, uh, verse 4 again, God forbid, let the most high be true, but every man a liar. All right? And, and that ain't every man. That's every man that's not in agreement with the faith. Okay, every man is not in agreement with this this faith, the gospel. You're a liar. I'm not a liar. Okay, because I speak according to this word. I got the light. Isaiah chapter eight verse twenty to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. All right. That light of Yahweh shot. That's why he is the anointed. All right. He is the, uh, by English transliteration, the Messiah. According to the Hebrew, that's Mashayak. The Mashayak. All right. The anointed one. All right. And uh, you, you almost always anoint with oil you know that's that's the anointing element oil all right now what do you need in order to uh burn a lamp or even a candle people don't understand uh the candles they work with a mixture of wax and oil it's oil in them candles uh to to help keep it burning So, uh, but yes, that, that, that oil is the key element. Uh, it's a source of fuel. 
for the light. So Yahweh Shai, being the anointed, he is also our light bearer. He is our Lucifer. Okay? Our Lord Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, is the Lucifer of the elect, of the children of Israel. Okay? Now, Satan, the adversary, Satan goes back to the Hebrew Shatan, which means adversary, the adverse one. He's perverted, all right? Everything that the Most High done, he has turned it upside down, all right? He's not a creator. He's just a perverter. He's the adversary, all right? So Shatan is the Lucifer of the children of Israel. The seed of the wicked one in this earth, in this earth, all right? And they masquerade as the so-called white people today, all right? So Lucifer is a title. It's not a name. It's a title. Satan is the Lucifer to the so-called white people. Yahweh is the Lucifer or light bearer of the elect of the children of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans predominantly. But wherever else you may be around the world with the ears to hear this gospel, okay? Romans 8 and 16 states that the spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. All right, and that spirit being the spirit of this word, this very word that I'm reading, it bear witness with the spirits of the, the children of the Most High, his elect. So meaning you're going to resonate with this, the truth of it. When someone speaking lies on this word, it's going to rub you the wrong way. It's like a song played out of key or out of note. You know, it just, it irks your nerves. Because it ain't sounding right. It don't sound right. Hold up. Now, that note ain't right. And Cornelius is an Edomite. No, that ain't right. Go back and play that again. Hit that note right this time. You understand? But, yeah, back to this Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Okay? So to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, there is no light in them. So if you speak according to this word, that means the light is in you. You got the anointing. Now, some of the anointing. So this is why it says back in Romans 3 and 4. God forbid, yea, let the most high be true, but every man a liar that's not in agreement on one accord with the truth of this gospel. So like I said, I'm not a liar. Because I speak according to the law and to the testimony. I speak according to the truth of this word. This is why it says, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings. All right, you can't lie and be justified. Most I would not justify a liar. You have to be speaking the truth. So there are men out here that are speaking the truth. But if you speak not according to this word, then you're a liar. So it said that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings because we speak what the Holy Spirit told us to speak. And mightest overcome when thou art judged. If we come into the time of judgment. We're trying to overcome death as our Lord did. Okay? And there'll be some, there'll be some of us that are martyred, some of us in this faith that are martyred. But then that's that's how they conquer. Some brothers won't taste of death. Some brothers will be martyred. But as long as you hold on to your faith, 
whether you are put to death on this side or not, as long as you hold on to your faith, you will overcome. But that's the ultimate test or the ultimate proving that our temptation will the most high see if you're going to renounce your faith due to your flesh. Are you going to let your flesh cause you to denounce your faith? Or are you going to hold faithful to the good word and the gospel and everything that you've been taught? You're going to hold on to it for dear life in the face of death, in the face of adversities, turmoils, and tribulations. You're going to hold on and you're going to remain or will you renounce? And this is the this is what this is all boiling down to. And so we're trying to be justified in our sayings, which is why we make it a point to be on point and to speak the truth in this word. You know, because you know, when it's all said and done, we want to overcome when we are judged. We're in the time of judgment. So, uh, yeah, that money ain't gonna do you no good. Uh, back in Ezekiel 7, you know, uh, let's see, satisfy. Yep, 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 because I was talking about all people, there's two-thirds that are lost. they still out here trying to satisfy their souls. Get that house. I mean, everything, I look at the world, and especially here in America, I, I look at this, and all I see is a system in shambles. You know, because this is, the Heavenly Father got that vibration being pushed on both sides because, uh, See, on the left-hand side with the uh, the elite, these elite of Edom, they're pushing for chaos. That's their motto, order out of chaos. So they're pushing for confusion. You know, that's one of their uh, weapons. That's, that's one of their major weapons is chaos. Divide and conquer called stirring up shit controversy. So they're pushing for the... You know, uh, destruction of certain institutions like the the institution of the Federal Reserve note, the U.S. Federal Reserve note, and these different things that are causing these stirs and these chaos. So it's coming from the left, as the Apostle Ricard says from time to time: pressure from above, pressure from below, and then us <laughs> through the pushing or the teaching of the truth, we're causing quite a stir. In our own rights. You know, because us preaching this truth is is really tearing down this kingdom. From the inside out. So I look at the world and I see it in shambles. Whereas, well, hey, hey, St. Thessalonians chapter 2, the Heavenly Father said, I would choose their delusions. So some people look at this and they, oh, well, this is the best time to buy. I see opportunity. Yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this house and then I'm going to flip it and then I'm going to take the, the proceeds from that, put it in another house and then I'm going to keep doing the same process and then before you know it, bam, in five years, I'm going to be a multi-millionaire. You know, Jake be having these big dreams. But... Not at all worried about or concerned about their souls. This is a, that's why the scripture says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? But they don't see it as we see it here in this truth. All right. They don't see it. We, the heavenly father gave us totally different eyes from this world. You know, we all should be just in a fight or flight right now, you know. Just as far as our mindset, we shouldn't be in the mindset of getting comfortable and chilling. Yeah, chilling been done. This ain't even time to chill. 
We all need to be on. This is uh, Death Con, what, 4. We need to be on the highest alert. So, yes, yeah, it says uh, Ezekiel 7 and 19. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Most High. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels. Just like Esau. Scripture really said, when he is about to fill his belly, then the Heavenly Father is going to rain down their wrath upon him. And all people follow in the footsteps of this devil. They're his spitting image, spiritually. Spiritually, two-thirds of our people, a lot of the two-thirds, I ain't going to say all of the two-thirds, but a lot of the two-thirds are the spiritual spitting image of Esau. So the same curses that's going to befall this devil is going to befall a lot of our people. So it says, neither fill their bowels, meaning be satisfied. They're not going to, their soul will not be filled. It says because it is a stumbling block of their iniquity. So, now what I want to do is uh, direct your attention to this quick clip that I got, like a minute, some change. And uh, they just show you, yeah, there's an all out offensive being launched. They're going after. Well, they've been tampering with the food and water. Now they're destroying your means to uh, buy and sell privately. They're, uh, yeah, even just your your right to uh, have your own house. You know, to house yourself. That's the basic rights. Heavenly Father gave to every man food, clothing, and shelter. You know, we have to work for our, our own, but that's the right of every man to have his own food, clothing, and shelter. And a means to protect said food, clothing, and shelter. And Esau is trying to do away with all of that. So we're going to play this quick clip and uh, close out. And this, this lady here is Karen Kingston. She's been very vocal in speaking out against the hook shot. You know, um, I mean, bringing receipts, going, getting lab, lab tests done and everything. She's been with uh, collaborating with some of the top researchers in the juice, the juice field. And uh, she's very knowledgeable uh, uh, her journey began because she got jacked up by the juice. Just to give a little background on her. And she said her her blood was down there like uh, gel. If, if I remember the story correctly, she said her blood had uh, coagulated. And it was down there like a gel consistency. And, and uh, the other Heavenly Father had blessed her to come out of it. I don't know what she did or who she went to see, but that hook shot jacked her up. And so she began being an advocate, if that makes sense, against the hook shot, you know, and, and uh, speaking out against it and then giving you the paper, the documentation behind it. So we'll play, we'll play this, this is real short. And uh, she's showing you what they're doing right now to the food. I'm bringing in quite the conundrum. Um, I also reported in 2021 and 2022 that the mRNA was being used in our uh, meat industry, in poultry and, and beef and pork, and that it could withstand 170 degree Fahrenheit temperature. In 2022, I reported on that the mRNA technology was being used in plants. And we should talk about that today because it's hijacking the photosynthesis process of a plant to instead create these bioweapons. Um, so that's going to actually affect, you know, not just people who eat tomatoes and lettuce and vegetables that have mRNA technology and them that are producing these spike protein weapons, 
But because they're hijacking the photosynthesis process, it's actually hijacking the conversion of carbon dioxide and water to oxygen. So it's going to, you know, these are, these are, um, these technologies are, are it's not genocide. This is extermination, extinction level event of the human species is what it is. And just to give you an idea how serious this is, and uh, I would have to agree with it. This is extinction level type of shit. You know? So this is crazy. So anyway, uh, yeah, she's saying that if you didn't already know, they're putting this MRA, uh, mRNA technology in everything that you have to consume or just come in contact with. All right. So they're, they're injecting the cows with the, the jump shot already. And then the, the chicken and the other things, you know, they can add it later or they can either, either give them the, uh, the actual inoculation as they do with certain cows. They just inoculate them and then it makes it to your dinner plate. And she said, that they, they can withstand up to 100, over 170 degrees, which most people cook their chicken to 165 degrees. So you would have to burn your chicken, in essence, to uh, get rid of that, this synthetic pathogen. Yep, so, uh, yeah, they're doing that. This whole M. M mRNA uh, nanobot quantum technology is is really um, is really jacking things up. You know, it's really jacking everything up, and it's all about to come to a head. But this is why the scripture says what it says. Okay. Going back to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 22. And except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be, be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. All right. So that's just how bad it is. They are literally polluting the gene pool of humanity. Whether you agree to the shit or not. And that's wicked. Alright. That's high level wickedness. And as the scripture said. We was going to be battling against. So again back to the chilling out. We are at battle. Against the rulers of darkness. And wickedness in high places. You know. They're working with these demons. It, this hierarchy of demons. So you better be working with your power. You better be tapped in. You better be fasting. You better be praying. You better be reading your scriptures. Getting a full diet. All right. Of the, the word of the most high. Because. Our opposition. The adversary. The ops. Okay. They're not playing. They're not playing. And they're using every weapon at their disposal against us. So we need to be using that one weapon, which is a one size fit all. That one weapon that we have to combat this. And that is these words, the Holy Bible. And so again, Matthew 24 and 22, and except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be left, or there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And so the Heavenly Father, he's going to have to come back and interrupt this shit because it's getting out of hand. Things are going way too far. You know? And we thought that the white boy was just going to go on the killing spree. At least that was my thoughts. I thought they were just going to go on a rampage. You know, but 
they're, they're, they're polluting the gene pool of humanity. And they're literally trying to make men into robots. You know, then it's the same result. No flesh can be saved. You know, there would be no flesh. If you if you a cyborg, half man, half human, yeah, the most I need to put you out your misery. But anyway, we're going to close out here. Ezekiel chapter 4 and verse 13. No, uh, 14. Yeah, 13, I'm sorry. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 13. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, with the I will drive them. So yeah, Nash is really defiled, you know. They already was hitting us with the GMOs and, you know, just these disgusting uh, practices okay, uh, sanitary practices that they was employing with all of this mass food production, you know, it's just it's, it's sickening. If you look at how some of this, this food and this meat is processed, you know, even how the, how the livestock, the, the cows and, and the animals get treated at, at a lot of these facilities, just that is sickening. But now they're introducing the mRNA into our food supply. And not only the meats, but also your fruits and your vegetables. They're introducing it on the genetic level. Into the food supply. So, yeah, the most I got it. Yeah, you, it ain't no way around this one. Except by the most high. So, I'm going to end it right there, and I pray that you all were edified to the next one. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Barakatham, Shalom.